Welcome to the History of North America. I'm Mark Vinette. When was Canada first colonized by Europeans, and who were the people that attempted to establish these initial non-Indigenous settlements? Numerous bands of Viking adventurers reached Iceland in the mid-800s, and by the early 10th century, their new home had become a center for settlement by Danes and Norwegians. Iceland was a departure point for launching expeditions into the unknown reaches of the North Atlantic. In the year 1000, Eric the Red led an expedition from Iceland that settled in Greenland. His son, Leif Erikson, later reached North America, which he called Vinland, meaning Wineland, because of the large quantities of wild wine berries that were found. Archaeological finds suggest that the original Vinland settlement was probably at what is now Lasso Meadows in the Canadian island province of Newfoundland. Settlements in continental North America were aimed to exploit natural resources, such as furs and in particular lumber, which was in short supply in Greenland. These Viking colonies were short-lived, supplied and populated for several generations before isolation, distance, climate, and hostile relations with the indigenous peoples proved too great. Jacques Cartier led his third and last expedition to the St. Lawrence River Valley in 1541. A new headquarters was established a few miles upstream from the Amerindian village of Stadacona, near the present site of Quebec City. This time, Cartier was to be followed by Jean-François de La Roque, Sieur de Roberval, with a party of colonists. After a wait which lasted through the following winter, Cartier set sail for home, only to meet Roberval's party in three tall ships in the harbor of what is now St. John's, Newfoundland. Diamonds of Canada, mined by Jacques Cartier's men at the mouth of Rivière du Cap Rouge, proved to be worthless quartz. Cartier's treasure is remembered in the name of Quebec's Cap Diamant, Cape Diamond, or Cap au Diamant and also in the French proverb faux comme un diamant du Canada, as false as Canadian diamonds. Fool's gold and diamonds were brought back to France by Cartier and gave rise to the then popular European expression as fake as diamonds from Canada. Ironically, Canada is today one of the world's largest producers of gold and diamonds. The Kingdom of Saguenay was a fanciful, mythical country rich in gold and diamonds, supposedly located, according to the natives, inland of present-day Quebec City. Adventurer Jacques Cartier tried in vain to reach this realm on several occasions. From 1541 to 43, France attempted to colonize Canada at the Cap Rouge settlement along the interior of the St. Lawrence River Valley. Jean-François Roberval was a French military officer appointed Viceroy of Canada by King Francis I. Explorer Jacques Cartier disregarded the orders of Roberval, who was his senior officer, to accompany the colonizing party back to Quebec. Instead, Cartier sailed for France under cover of darkness. The Roberval expedition proceeded upstream, and a tragically unsuccessful effort was made to found a permanent colony on the site where Cartier had wintered the previous winter. By the following year, some 60 of the colonists had died. Roberval decided to abandon the whole colonizing project and sail home to France. Troubles with natives, winter, no passage to the Orient, fool's gold, and fake diamonds led France to turn its back on the Canadian experiment and abandon North America for almost 60 years. Singing or chanting accompanied labor on transatlantic seagoing vessels among various cultural groups at various times and in various places. A written reference to what seems to be a sailor's hauling chant in 1549 is an early cited example. A sea shanty is a genre of traditional maritime folk song that was once commonly sung as a work song to accompany rhythmical labor aboard large sailing vessels. The origin of the English word shanty is unknown, but one of the earliest and most consistently offered derivations is from the French word chanté, meaning to sing. The word shanty, spelled with an S, brings to mind sea-related work songs in general. However, 
the shanty genre is distinct among various global work song phenomena. Its formal characteristics, specific manner of use, and repertoire cohere to form a picture of a work song style that emerged on vessels sailing the Atlantic Ocean to and from North America. I'm Mark Vinette, and I hope you're enjoying the ride.